Hi and welcome back to the next video from Effective Dashboards. In this video we will look at the bullet chart and this is a continuation from my previous video so I will link that below and it will be a, it'll be a pop up here on the screen somewhere to see the previous video. In this video we're going to look at bullet charts and we're going to look at specifically how we set up these bandings that lie behind the bullet charts. Okay so Let's get cracking. So if we just remember, this is the bullet chart by OKViz. You do need to go in and download this um, through the Get Visuals. Now I do cover that in the previous video, so I'm not going to go that, into that in a, any, any detail today. So what we've got is we've got the availability information here for these different pieces of equipment. And each one has got a different target. Um, we've used a bullet chart to display those targets for each one, because each one's got a different target. and Format some conditional some conditional formatting. So these bars are red if it's below its target. So that draws the attention to that value there or those those pieces of equipment. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at these states. So if we go to options and we go to formatting here and we look at states. So there's there's two options when it comes to states. The first one. I can I can say two two options, but there's really I guess there's three. Um, the first option, broadly speaking, is you can enter the state value straight into here. Okay, you can set enter your your value straight into here. The second option is that you can enter state values into the field well. Okay, so if you've got state values that are defined as calculated columns or measures, you can enter them straight into here. Now, if you enter these values into this the, the, the states field in the, the field well, they will overwrite and take precedent of precedence over the values that you enter in this section here. Okay, so that's just something to bear in mind. Now, if you want to something that's quick, you can just accept percentages and you can see here, because this is at 0 to 100% and we know that's the case because we can see it here, but if you want to be certain, we can go up to our value axis and we can make it start at zero and end at one. And that will just force it to be a hundred percent. Now, if this is a financial, um, a financial number, for example, sales or income or revenue or profit, then you probably want that to be a bit more automated. But we know that this is going to be zero and this is going to be 100% because it's a percentage. And we know that availability can never be above 100%. So we're fairly comfortable with this being set using the, the values here. Now, if we go and look at the states, it set us percentage. And what has happened here is that these colors have been distributed at equal intervals here. Each one of these represents 20%. And it's quite easy to see that. Okay, so each one of these is 20%. And the idea behind these is to show a gradient of how good or how bad this value is in comparison to, to something. Okay, so at the bottom here, it's bad, it's getting better, it's getting better, and then it's kind of good up here, close to the target. Now, as it stands, these gradients are based on a percentage of the actual um, span here. Okay, so if I go up we've got percentage value. If I go up and change that from being 0 to 100% to 0 to 200%, you'll see how this works. Then what's happened here is, again, these have been split into five equal sections, and each one of these now equals 40% rather than 20%, but it is an actual, it is 20% of the actual total range here. Um, if that, if that kind of makes sense, we're talking about different percentages, but that's how it distributes it. So let's change that back to one. And let's go back in to the, the format states. Now the other option we've got is you can just put an absolute value in. So you might want that, that one there to start at, um, say 60%. That'd be 0.6. Okay, and that's going to take it right up to 60%. Now, when you are displaying or entering each of these values as, as absolute values, um, and also as 
percentages if you're not using the auto feature, then this is explaining the, the band from 0 to, okay, so this is from 0 to um, 6% or 60%, so you can see it's gone from 0 to 60%. Now if I put band 2 as 0 to 50%, we're not going to see anything. Okay, so even if I go and make it red, we won't see anything here. And that is because the um, this is going from 0 to 50%, but it's respecting the first one. Okay, so the first colour will always be on top, and then it'll be the second colour, then it'll be the third colour. So if I make that 0 to 70%, you'll see that it's here. So it's gone from 0 to 70%, but that first colour is always brought to the top. So we can only see that extra 10% here. Okay, we can't quite see that there. So that's the second option. You can you can code these. Now, whatever you put in here is going to be the banding for each one of these. Okay, so I might want to put that one at 80%. And this one at 90, and then I'll put this one at 1. Okay, it's a little bit more difficult to see this one here. Um, okay, so that's the bandings we've got, and they are set for each one of these um, individually. Um, sorry, as a whole. So you can only, if you set them through the, the option here, you can only set one range, and it's applied to each one of these. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to get these bandings based on a, a percentage of the target, not a percentage of the actual range here, this 100% range. I'd like each of these bandings to be a percentage of this target. Okay, so customize the bandings for the each um, for each unit based on the target value. Now, to do that, what you need to do is set up some state values. Right, so what I've done here, if I go and look at the data model, is I've set up calculated columns for each one of the units. Now we could use measures, but I actually prefer to use calculated columns because if somebody uses this measure out of context here, it's going to look fairly, it's going to give some pretty confusing results. Now I do recognize that we do, in general, we try to keep the, the number of columns in the data model to the to a minimum. And if this was huge, then it might be a different consideration. But for just now, and just for us to be able to demonstrate this, um, we've just added these as calculated columns. So what I've done here is I've got the piece of equipment, I've got its availability, I've got its target, and I've set these different states to calculate a value using this formula here. So this one here is, um, I've said, okay, if it's at this point in time, the targets, if, it, if the performance is around about 50%, we want to replace the unit, okay? So state one, replace unit. Now that can be anything you want to choose there. I just like it. I think if you've got a state, it's it's useful to link it to an action that says, okay, what sort of action should we be, should we be considering if the performance is within that, within that sort of um, boundary? Mm. And then all I've done here is I've said availability target times 0 0.7. In fact, that should be there. Just keep that the same. 0 0.7. So what that's done is it's taken this value here, it's availability target, and I want the first band to be 70%, 0.7, of this value here. Not 70% of the total, which would be 70 but 70% of this value here. For the second one, let's see what I've done here. I've done that as being 80%. And then we've got 90, I've actually changed that to 97. So you just need to remember to keep these aligned. And then this one here is 100%. So it's just equal to this state here is just equal to the availability target. And then finally, we've had to put this one here that's equal to one, and I'll show you why that's required in a second. So we can define where each of the state values um, terminates. So remember, it's from zero to that value. So this state value here will be zero to 70% of the target. This one here will be zero to 80% of the target, etc., etc. So let's see how that works in the in the visualization. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this unit in here. So state one. 
it's going to be 70%. Let's pull it in. Now, here we, here we can see. So this is now overridden this. The, uh, the values we've defined in the, the format option. And we can see this one now is actually heading up to 70%. But it's 70% of this target here for each one of these. Okay, so these are dynamic and based on the target. And that's exactly what I wanted. Okay, because I, I want this to be good and bad and whatever to be based on its own target, not the target as a whole for each one of these. So that's the first one. And then we just need to pull these in. And we can see they're getting added to. Just add these in here. Okay, so this one here, this final one, is a band that goes up to the target. Okay, now what I want is I want also a band that goes above the target. Okay, so I want a band that goes all the way from all the way up to from this target value here to one hundred percent. And that's why we've used this max band and we've just made that one. Okay, so I pull that in there. And we can see that extra bit that's added in here. And it's a, bit, a little bit difficult to see the color, the, the color differentiation between these two here. Um, but, but just to show that working, you can go in and you can set the the state colors. So they're very, very similar. But if I were to set that one there to blue, you can see that's just filling in that gap above the target. So if anything's above the target, you can see that it's in this blue zone here. So I'll just set that back to the, the default colour there. Okay, so now it's starting to look a lot better. So now we've got, for each one, we've got the performance, we've got the actual value, we've got the target value, and we've got a range from good to bad for each one of the, um, for, to allow us to see how this performance is sitting within a range of states. So this one here we can see, is at this value here. Um, these one, this is over, this is over, this is over, so that's all good. But this one here, look, it's fallen within this range here. Now, the only issue we've got, as I mentioned before, is we need to have, a, or it would be good to be able to display what this actually means. Now, we can see it here, and we can see the third value here is this one here, full reliability review. I'd like that to be listed on the screen somewhere and it's fairly straightforward to do it and I think we'll cover that in the next video. Okay, so that's us for just now. Hopefully it's been useful. So you now know how to go and set up this, the states and also configure the states to be either a percentage or an absolute value or you can go and create measures or calculated columns like I've done here to be able to dynamically calculate these states based on the target value that you've set up. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you would like to subscribe, press the subscribe button and click the bell to keep up to date. I release a video around about every week. And thanks for listening and I'll talk to you in the next video.